I used to be able to walk into a room and say, hey, I'm, I'm Bruno Mars, I'm signed with Motown Records. And then now I have to say, I got dropped from Motown Records. You, you lose leverage. You Bruno Mars, the singer and songwriter known for hits like Uptown Funk and Just The Way You Are, has left fans worried by taking a break from the stage. Rumors have been swirling about the reason for his absence. At the age of 38, Bruno Mars has decided to open up about his situation. There have been many rumors surrounding this incident. What made Bruno Mars like this? Is the truth worrying? Let's find out what happened. Do you like the song Uptown Funk? If so, comment A. Before we delve into the details of this mysterious onstage disappearance, let's take a closer look at his early life and journey to stardom. Early life. Bruno Mars is the stage name that Peter Jean Hernandez, born on October 8, 1985 in Honolulu, Hawaii, chose for his musical career. He grew up in the vibrant Waikiki neighborhood in a family with rich cultural backgrounds. His father, Peter Hernandez, is a Puerto Rican immigrant with Jewish roots from Brooklyn, while his mother, Bernadette San Pedro Bayo, is a Filipino immigrant with Spanish roots. They met on stage when his mother danced the hula and his father played drums. <laughs> when he was just two years old, his father nicknamed him Bruno because he resembled the famous wrestler Bruno Sammartino. Bruno was influenced by music in his family from a young age. All six of his siblings were musically gifted. Bruno's childhood was filled with rock and roll, reggae, hip-hop, and R&B. The music of Little Richard and the songs performed by his mother left a deep impression on Bruno's soul. Bruno began his musical journey at a very early age. At just three years old, he imitated Elvis Presley with the encouragement of his uncle and quickly developed a love for the music of Michael Jackson and Elvis. At the age of four, he joined the family band The Love Notes, performing five days a week. His performances made him famous in his native Hawaii, and one of his most memorable moments was performing Can't Help Falling in Love as a child and accidentally peeing his pants. Bruno Mars' love of music from a young age laid a solid foundation for his later illustrious career. Bruno Mars continued to perform despite the hardships he faced in life. In 1990, at the age of five, he was hailed as Little Elvis by Hawaii Midweek and performed at the Aloha Bowl and in the film Honeymoon in Vegas. At just six years old, he appeared on the Arsenio Hall Show and was interviewed by Pauly Shore on MTV. Bruno's family regularly performed songs by Frankie Lyman and Little Anthony. He mastered many instruments, including drums, guitar, piano, and percussion. However, a major milestone came when his parents separated when Bruno was 12. The failure of his father's business worsened the family's financial situation, forcing them to move to poorer areas of Hawaii. The family often sought shelter in cars, on rooftops, or at Paradise Park, an abandoned bird zoo. Despite the hardships, Bruno remained steadfast in his pursuit of music and songwriting. His charm and lyrics were influenced by his musical years, particularly by Elvis Presley and Jimi Hendrix, a rock superstar from whom he learned guitar. Are. Bruno often refers to his family's musical heritage and Hawaiian roots when talking about his childhood. While attending Theodore Roosevelt High School in Honolulu, Bruno formed a band called The School Boys, which covered songs by the Isley Brothers and The Temptations. He began making money from music while still a student, notably earning $75 for a Michael Jackson impersonation and opening for major magic shows. Bruno's big break came when his sister introduced his recordings to Mike Lynn, an a and supervisor at Dr. Dre's Aftermath Entertainment. Lynn was impressed with Bruno's talent and invited him to Los Angeles in 2003 marking the beginning of a successful music career. After that, how did Bruno Mars' music career go? Was that period difficult for him? Let's follow along. Journey to music stardom. Bruno moved to pursue a career in music after finishing high school at 17 years old. His first home in Los Angeles was on Mansfield Avenue, where he was shocked to see such extreme poverty and filth. His stage name, Bruno, was derived from his boyhood nickname. For a touch of flair, he subsequently added Mars. Bruno chose the title out of this world to evade the assumption that he is a Latin artist. Although he was first pressured by the corporation to sing in Spanish, he finally chose to perform in English. Not only that, but he also wanted to keep his extraordinary abilities a secret from everyone around him, launching into production and solving any issues that may crop up. A recording deal with Motown Records was extended to Bruno Mars practically immediately upon his 2004 relocation to Los Angeles. He was disappointed because the deal did not provide him the chance to get the break he had wanted. Further complications arose as a result of his efforts to forge a link between Will and the IAM administration. Mars overcame these early obstacles to achieve a career turning point during his tenure at Motown. 
At this event, he met Philip Lawrence, an American composer and producer who would later play a pivotal role in his career. Mars opted to remain in Los Angeles instead of returning to Hawaii, even though his contract with Motown was canceled less than one year after he signed with the company. He and producers Steve Lindsay and Cameron Strang of Westside Independent signed a song publishing deal in 2005. Songbooks were to be published according to the plan. Mars met Brody Brown and Jeff Basker, two composers, through Mike Lynn. Mars then taught all three of them the ropes by working with Lindsay. The importance of intrinsic aptitude as one of several aspects in the development of contemporary music was stressed by Lindsay. To pull this off, you must understand what makes a song famous. It took Mars and his colleagues five years to see a significant improvement, but this learning time was vital. Mars, Basker, and Mars's brother Eric Hernandez were all members of Sex Panther when they were performing. Eric would go on to join Mars's band The Hooligans as their drummer. Philip Lawrence was first reluctant to meet Bruno Mars due to his precarious financial situation. Lawrence was able to settle his obligations because Keith Harris, drummer for the Black Eyed Peas, promised to reimburse him for whatever expenditures he had while touring. Lawrence asked the bus price to be no more than $5 in a lighthearted way. With the help of their fans, Lawrence and Mars were able to push through the first difficulties of collaborating on music and eventually win over the many rejections they encountered in the record industry. In 2006, Lawrence put him in touch with Aaron Bay Shuck, who would later become Mars's Atlantic Records A&R manager. Bay Shuck felt compelled to sign Mars the moment he saw eyes on him strumming a guitar. However, Atlantic Records took almost three years to officially contract Mars because they thought he needed more time to grow as a musician. Mars and Lawrence were about to give up in 2008 until Brandon Creed called. At this same time, their luck turned for the better. While searching for songs to play during the Menudo reunion, Creed discovered a Mars-written original called Lost and fell head over heels for it. Even though they were hesitant at first, Mars and Lawrence chose to sell it for $20,000 in the end. They could keep moving forward since this deal gave them the monetary boost they needed. Also, over the next nine years, Creed served as Mars's manager, which is an interesting aside. Alexandra Burke, Adam Levine, Brandy, Sean Kingston, and others were among Mars's collaborators before the singer gained fame on his own. The 2009 smash single Right Round, which Mars co-wrote with Flo Rita, was a watershed moment in his career. He had this achievement among his early triumphs. He co-wrote the song Get Sexy with the Sugar Babes and contributed backup vocals to it in 2010. Their album Sweet 7 featured his vocals. Furthermore, the Far East Movement's 3D rendition of Animal has Mars as a vocalist. In 2009, he was a part of many tracks, including Jason Ma's breakthrough single Love and Travis McCoy's charity single One at a Time for MTV's Staying Alive Foundation. Bruno Mars' ascent to solo stardom was nothing short of spectacular. He became famous and prominent as an artist after a string of outstanding partnerships catapulted him to the top. To begin, we will discuss his rise to fame and fortune. Thereafter, we will address the launch of his solo career. Bruno Mars' success stems from his ability to work with other artists. Travis McCoy's Billionaire and B.O.B.'s Nothing on You are two examples of his outstanding songwriting and singing abilities. Both of these tunes featured his his incredible work. Although both songs were huge hits, the one that topped the charts in the US and UK was Nothing On You. It was more than just a coincidence that everything worked out. Mars's skill and knack for writing memorable, catchy songs were on full display for all to see. In discussions with Mars, these early successes are often brought up, and a shocking reality is exposed. He believes that the song would have sounded more like classic 90s R&B had he sung every note of Nothing On You, different from our original plan. More importantly, the collaboration allowed him to showcase his skills as a featured artist, allowing him to add his flair to the mix without attempting to overshadow it. Maroon 5's first extent play EP it is better if you don't understand was re-released on May 11th 2010 following its original release with the publication of this EP he officially became a solo artist marking a significant turning point in his career it was a major step in solidifying his position in the music industry despite its poor ranking on the US Billboard 200 list along with the EP you got a music video for the other side with B.O.B. and CeeLo Green performing the song with the release of this song Mar Mars has further cemented his status as an adaptable musician who can collaborate with industry titans. Mars learned the hard way as his fame increased that being a famous musician came with its share of difficulties. 
Earnings for Bruno Mars skyrocketed as his star rose in the music business. Based on numbers supplied by Billboard, Mars was the 10th highest paid musician in 2013, with earnings of over $18,339,681. But that's not all. Mars' earnings numbers have been increasing year after year. The numbers will blow your mind. Financial success. Between June 2013 and June 2014, Mars earned a salary of $60 million, which placed him in the 12th position on the list of celebrities' 100 salaries. It wasn't until 2014 that Forbes magazine started keeping accurate records of its earnings. The fact that Mars is currently ranked 6th on Forbes' list of the highest paid celebrities in the world is undeniable evidence of his continued financial success. According to projections, Mars's revenue for the fiscal year that ended in June 2017 was around $39 million. Forbes listed Jupiter as the artist in the United States who earned the most money in 2017, with a total of $100 million spent. Furthermore, he was ranked 10th on the Celebrity 100 list, which indicates that his annual earnings reached a new high. Furthermore, he was given the largest salary check that has ever been written. Between June 1, 2018 and June 1, 2019, he earned a total of $51,500,000, which placed him at position number 54 on the Celebrity 100 list published by Forbes in 2019. On his way to becoming a celebrity, Bruno Mars has, like many other celebrities, been confronted with challenges and engaged in legal battles. However, he has also achieved exhilarating milestones and financial success along the way. Do you know which of his legal battles he's had? Here's a closer look at the legal battles that have marked his journey. Challenges and legal battles. Following his performance at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas on September 19th, 2010, Bruno Mars found himself in a legal predicament that was completely unforeseen. When the security officers observed that Mars was spending an unusually lengthy time in the restroom, they became suspicious, which ultimately led to his imprisonment once they made the discovery. During his imprisonment, Mars admitted that he had made a thoughtless error and said that he was filled with a tremendous amount of shame about what had occurred. After giving it some consideration, he has admitted that the events that transpired and the lessons that he learned during this difficult time took him off guard. He has gained this realization after giving it some thought. Mars was able to escape sitting in jail for an extended period thanks to the assistance of a plea deal, even though the allegations against him were rather serious. By the terms of the arrangement, he was required to participate in educational programs and perform community service. Following Mars' successful completion of all the conditions stipulated in the plea deal in 2012, the accusations against him were officially dismissed, and he moved on from this chapter. Mars, on the other hand, was not just confronted with a single legal concern. The argument over copyright with the millionaire was merely the first of many. Demetrius Orlandis Proctor filed a lawsuit against the rapper Travi McCoy and the musician Bruno Mars on January 28, 2014. The lawsuit revolves around the song Billionaire, which was published by Travi McCoy on his solo album in 2010. The song was composed by Bruno Mars and released by Travi McCoy. He contends that they willfully took the music away from him, even though Proctor asserted ownership of the song in 2011, which was a year after the album's first release. For damages, Demetrius Orlandis Proctor has filed a lawsuit against both Bruno Mars and Travi McCoy. Their use of his concepts in the film Billionaire is believed to be a theft of his ideas, and as a result, he has incurred damages to both his reputation and his finances. Not only is Demetrius Orlandis Proctor seeking monetary compensation, but he is also demanding that all streaming services remove the song Billionaire from their respective catalogs. The public statements that Bruno Mars and Travi McCoy made in response to questions regarding the lawsuit filed by Demetrius Orlandis Proctor were not very forceful. There is no evidence to suggest that they were concerned about the likelihood of Proctor winning the case, and they refrained from discussing the specifics of the case. This was the period during which both musicians continued their work and released new songs. Moreover, once the trial had already begun, no information regarding the trial was made available to the general public. Neither the damages nor the the removal of the song Billionaire were requested by Proctor, and the action eventually failed to gain any pace by the time it was finally filed. At this point, the specifics of any settlement that may have been reached between the parties outside of court are unclear. Bruno Mars's career continues to go from strength to strength despite this legal setback. Unorthodox Jukebox, his second studio album, was released on December 7, 2012. After he had taken a short vacation from the music industry, Mars displayed a great deal of bravery by providing fans with a pre 
preview of the complete album one week before its official release. With a remarkable total of 192,000 copies sold in its first week of release, Unorthodox Jukebox made its debut at position number two on the Billboard 200 list in the United States. Many nations like the United Kingdom, Switzerland, Canada, and Australia saw its popularity skyrocket to the point that it swiftly eclipsed that of all other countries. Over 6 million copies of the album were sold all over the world, solidifying Mars place as one of the most prominent pop musicians of the 2010s. Despite a few small complaints, it was a huge financial success because it avoided the music industry and the scandals that are connected with it. Uptown Funk and Bruno Mars are once again the subjects of litigation alleging that they have violated copyright requirements. Immediately after the publication of 24K Magic, a fresh storm was ignited by Bruno Mars's blockbuster hit song, Uptown Funk, on November 18, 2016, and his career took a bad turn as a result. Two years ago, this song was among the most popular songs in the world, but today it was once again in danger. Despite the enormous success of the Mars-featured, Mark Ronson-produced song, there was a dramatic rise in the number of allegations of copyright infringement when it was initially released. The Gap Band is unsurpassed when it comes to their ability to stir up controversy. There were allegations that the band's uptown funk sounded too much like their own song, Oops Upside Your Head, which they had produced with their producer. These allegations were later brought to light. Because of this, they decided to divide the authorship of uptown funk as well as the revenues from the selling of the album. Even though this resulted in the Gap Band making a significant amount of money, they were still need to cope with legal concerns. There were a great number of musicians who joined the Gap Band in accusing uptown funk of infringing upon their copyright. Victoria, a vocalist from Serbia was under the impression that her song had been unlawfully stolen. Nonetheless, she decided against taking legal action. An electrofunk band known as Collage has filed a lawsuit against Uptown Funk, alleging that the latter has stolen their song, Young Girls. At the same time, the band The Sequence claimed that the song violated their Funk You Up. A further factor that contributed to the legal problem that occurred in 2017 was the fact that La Strada Entertainment brought notice to the fact that Zapp's song More Bounce to the Ounce is comparable to Uptown Funk. While it is true that certain accusations were eventually dismissed, the debate brought to light the persistent disagreements that exist within the music industry over copyright and originality. These kinds of assertions spark debates that went into more profound subjects, such as the motivations that drive musicians and how one might discriminate between tribute and plagiarism. Various critics held contrasting viewpoints. While some people thought that Mars and Ronson's interpretation of funk was new and innovative, others thought that it was too much of a steal. This sparked a discussion among individuals over who is the owner of the creative process and how past works may have influenced more recent releases. Another problem that was brought to light as a result of this incident was cultural appropriation. Mars's supporters responded by stating that Mars was only paying honor to the roots of the funk genre, even though other people claimed that Mars stole black singers without giving credit where credit was due. During a discussion about Grapevine, Sensei Aishato reprimanded Mars for what she saw to be a lack of innovation in what Mars was doing. She gave the impression that the capacity of white viewers to observe black culture from the point of view of an artist who is not black contributed to Mars's already impressive popularity. Following the release of Uptown Funk, the heirs of the Gap Band suggested that BMG had delayed the payment of royalties. Uptown Funk, a well-known song, was once again in the news in January of 2021. However, this time it was because of a legal dispute about the management of BMG's rights. BMG was sued by members of the Gap Band and its success Successors, the Wilson brothers Robert and Ronnie for what they said was a refusal to pay royalties on a song that they had created and that was performed by Bruno Mars and Mark Ronson. It is the time frame that we have here. The year 2015 was the year when Ronnie and Robert Wilson came to an agreement that granted them 3.4% of the copyright for the song Uptown Funk. This arrangement was made to compensate the Gap Band for the usage of their popular song, Oops Upside Your Head, by Uptown Funk, which has been in circulation since 1979. When BMG acquired Minder Music, the publisher of the Gap Band, in 2015, it was alleged that they violated the contract by neglecting to pay royalties and by failing to provide an exact breakdown of their part. As a result of the violation of the contract, the heirs demanded more than $75,000 in return. In addition to that, they requested that the annual 
annual interest rate in 2015 be set at 9%? During the dispute, it was discovered that the Wilsons were entitled to 100% of Uptown Funk's profits after Minder Music had acquired BMG. The heirs of Woodrow Wilson, on the other hand, decided in April 2021 to give up their claim without any consequences. Because their actions did not permanently halt the legal action, it may be renewed at a later date. The argument put out by BMG's defense was that the claims were without foundation. To dismiss the claim, the corporation made it very obvious that no monetary compensation nor a settlement was exchanged from either party. During the time that the case is being reviewed, BMG has reaffirmed its dedication to legally treating artists and being honest. In the aftermath of this lawsuit, there will be a great deal of legal difficulties. This event brought to light the complexities of music royalties and rights tracking, which were previously hidden from view. Additionally, the bigger issues of copyright and equal remuneration in the music industry were brought back to the forefront as a consequence of this. The progression of the case caused a great deal of alarm among many people because of the possible far reaching reaching repercussions it may have on the arts and entertainment industry. But soon after the royalty settlement, another intriguing story about Bruno Mars emerged. Is this the reason for his absence from the stage? And what is the story? Let's follow. Rumors of the gambling problem. Reports have surfaced recently suggesting that Mars is in deep debt, possibly reaching $50 million, and is battling a gambling addiction. Are these claims true in your opinion? How could someone with Mars's level of wealth be subjected to such accusations? We need to discover the truth right now. Bruno Mars was swept up in a storm of controversy as the year 2021 started. Rumor has it that the pop singer owes MGM Resorts International up to 50 million from his massive gambling habit. Rumor has it that Mars became bankrupt after his wild gambling spree got out of hand, costing him a fortune. According to the claims, Mars was in a bit of a financial and personal jam, and he utilized a good chunk of his income from his incredibly profitable residency in Las Vegas to settle his obligation. Another unnamed source claims that Mars's gambling habits were a major factor in his transfer to MGM, exactly exacerbating an already volatile situation. The media, reviewers, and fans were all quite interested in this rumor. Many found it hard to believe that someone so wealthy could be in such a vulnerable position. An estimated $90 million in yearly income is generated by Mars's Las Vegas gigs alone. Everyone agrees that Bruno Mars isn't your average performer. He has played to sold out audiences all around the globe, received several prizes, and sold millions of CDs. The world knows him as a superstar. Despite his outwardly unusual persona, the fact that he is burdened with such a substantial debt casts a shadow over the situation. In light of these disclosures, MGM Resorts wasted no time addressing the persistent accusations. In a statement that they issued, they vehemently rejected the claims as false, and they used some rather harsh language in doing so. Mars owes MGM $50 million, according to MGM. That assertion is unfounded. According to a spokesperson from the MGM Casino, Bruno Mars owes the casino nothing, and the claims made by News Nation and others were totally false when they abruptly went out on March 19th to clear his name. Furthermore, the group highlighted their cordial and intimate friendship with Mars. In particular, the casino official confirmed to Variety that the division is proud of its long-term collaboration with Bruno Mars, clarifying that it is a partnership and not the case that MGM owns Bruno Mars due to debt, as reported by several media. Countless international tourists have been enticed by the singer to visit the MGM resort and casino, resulting in financial gains for the establishment. Their desire to put an end to any further conjecture regarding this matter is consistent with their continuous expressions of contentment with this cooperation. Getting to the bottom of the matter while keeping the artist happy is their first priority. However, the accusations are being brought up often, even though MGM has strongly rejected them because it is so captivating, many people are unable to tune out the news. Since 2016, when he admitted it during a carpool karaoke session with James Corden, Mars has been forthright about his gambling tendencies. Mars admitted during the lighthearted discussion that he had to rely on on gambling to pay his bills at one point in his life. This, he said, was a time in his life. Fans and the media were able to speculate about whether his gambling had been a major problem in the past, even if the statement was made playfully. Some people are wondering if there is more going on than what is being revealed, as Mars has earned a tidy profit from his stay in Sin City and gambling is a very addictive hobby. 
What do you think of these allegations? Are they true? One intriguing twist is the timing of the allegations. Mars was at the height of his career, with his annual Las Vegas show raking in millions of dollars. Could there be a hidden truth that both Mars and MGM are trying to hide to protect their reputations? Career Retreat the reports that he was in terrible debt simply helped to deepen the mystery, even though there was a glaring mismatch between his public image of prosperity and success, and the allegations that he was in terrible debt. During the continuous conversation around Mars's financial position, the artist found himself in the spotlight for a different reason. During the year 2023, Mars and his musical colleague Anderson Pack made headlines when they made the surprise decision to pull their record, which was named an evening with Silk Sonic from consideration for the Grammy Award. Awards. The record, which had garnered a great deal of critical praise and had attained commercial success, was being considered for many Grammy nominations. Mars announced that they would not be submitting the album for any Grammy recognition, which was a move that was surprising to both fans and industry insiders. Despite this, Mars made the announcement. Additionally, Mars stated that he and Anderson Pack thought that they had already won because their blockbuster song, Leave the Door Open, which had won all of the honors the previous year, had received such a resoundingly favorable reaction the year before. He observed that everything else was the icing on the cake and that the recognition that they had already gained was adequate then. To make a dignified announcement about their departure, the pair chose to refrain from participating in the Grammy submission process. This decision allowed others to grab the spotlight instead of them. In addition to expressing gratitude for the honors they had previously received, Mars expressed gratitude for the opportunity to perform at the Grammy Awards. As an additional point of interest, they mentioned that they desired to make the most of this opportunity to enjoy the music music of other performers. The decision that Silk Sonic took was recognized by the Recording Academy, yet the move caused a great number of fans and critics to be perplexed. In light of Mars and Pac's outstanding performance at the 2022 Grammy Awards, in which they won four accolades, including Record of the Year and Single of the Year for their single Leave the Door Open, it looked to be an unexpected move for them to chose not to participate at the ceremony that would take place the following year. In addition, this judgment was regarded with a certain amount of suspicion suspicion upon its arrival. Could it be that Mars, already facing rumors about his gambling habits, wanted to avoid too much public scrutiny? There is still no official answer, however, in recent times, fans have been delighted to see his return. Have you heard about this return? Is this a response to the rumors surrounding him? The Return in August 2024, Bruno Mars made waves in the music industry when he released his duet Die With A Smile with Lady Gaga. This comeback attracted a lot of attention from the public, especially when both artists created interesting teasing on social media, sharing mysterious images and posting ambiguous comments about their relationship. The song immediately received strong support from fans, especially because this was the first time the two artists collaborated on an original work in a long time. The content of Die With A Smile touches on universal themes such as love, relationships, and the challenges that life brings, making the song easily connect with the audience. In a short time, the song reached more than 137 million views on YouTube and rose to the third position on the Billboard chart. Many people have noticed that Mars and Gaga wanted to not only create a hit, but also convey deeper messages about enduring hardships in their careers. Despite facing criticism and trouble related to a gambling debt of up to $50 million, Bruno Mars has remained calm and has not spoken out publicly as often as many other artists. Instead, he has used his intelligence and determination to overcome difficulties in his career. How do you feel about the rumors surrounding Mars? We look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting news. Goodbye, and see you in the next videos.